Most tax pros leave a message. It's Jane. I'm moving on to a TurboTax expert who beat your price. Adam Devine, tell him how I feel. Hey, tax pro, she's been thinking twice. Let's believe TurboTax will beat your price. This is a tax break. Uh! Switch to a TurboTax live expert and we'll beat what you paid your pro last tax season. Make the switch at TurboTax.com slash beat your price. TurboTax full service only. Sign up by 12-20-2024 and file by 4-1-2025. Full details at TurboTax.com slash beat your price. The T-Biz Podcast delivers T-News that you need to know. A recap of the week's major headlines with commentary and cultural trends hosted by Dan Bolton. It is the voice of origin for tea professionals and enthusiasts worldwide. Tea nourishes and inspires. It is an ancient plant-based medicine that simultaneously heals and energizes the body as it soothes the mind. Making fine tea is a blend of artistry and craftsmanship. The $200 billion tea trade is fundamentally local, yet exerts global influence, employing millions to enhance the well-being of all. Hello, everyone. Here are this week's headlines. A proposed global alliance would creatively constrain tea production. Luxme Tea acquires Rwanda's Sawathi Tea Estate, and a TikTok sensation inspires Sprite Plus Tea. Plus, Amigos del Cha. Brazil is a vast beverage market with a well-established tradition of tea and herbal infusions. Coffee and yerba mate dominate, but at-home tea is projected to generate $8 billion in sales this year, and restaurant delivery and takeaway tea sales will add $6 billion more. Growth is powered by evolving health and wellness trends that favor the diverse and distant teas and blends. Conversations among young urban consumers seeking healthier lifestyles now center on origins, styles, and functionality. Low-calorie preservative-free beverages are associated with relaxation and well-being. This week, editor Arvinda Anantheraman will introduce veteran importer and retailer Elisit Vanderwurst. Her business, Amigos dos Cha, Friends of Tea, is located near Sao Paulo, the hub of specialty tea, a market she has served for 30 years. More in a minute, but first, this important message. What makes a perfect cup of Ceylon tea? The perfect cup is from the tea businesses that ensure the protection of all the children living within their tea estates. We salute Kailani Valley, Telawakili, Bogawanthalawa, Harana, and Eliftia tea estates. Support Save the Children, Sri Lanka. Africa's tea stakeholders believe that actions more than words are needed to address the global challenges facing the tea industry. East African Tea Trade Association Managing Director George Ramuga said those attending the 6th African Tea Convention understand the need to reduce production to improve quality and raise profitability, which is essential to finance climate resilience and achieve sustainable cultivation at origin worldwide. He said a key takeaway from the gathering is the need to establish a global alliance of tea-producing countries to enforce creative constraints on production. Omoga cited India's decision to close factories nationwide for three months beginning November 30th as an example that other producing countries should adopt. He said that growers in the main tea-producing countries of Kenya, Malawi, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Uganda should lower volumes by reducing their pruning cycle to three years from the current practice of four years. He said attendees stress the importance of government and tea board collaboration in establishing quality standards for producing quality teas. Quote, value addition is critical, end quote, he said. Omuga explained that Africa has a huge potential for increased domestic consumption, Producers should pursue market diversification strategies, including leveraging the African Continental Free Trade Agreement to promote intra-African tea trade. He said he hopes to persuade tea producers to give the East Africa Tea Trade Association 
the marketing mandate to create new markets, expand emerging markets, and protect existing markets. Attendees discuss the negative impact of synthetic fertilizers on soil ecosystems and the importance of reducing reliance on wood for fuel. To promote sustainability, Africa's 18 tea-producing nations should increase the participation of women in decision-making positions, he said. The Rwanda Tea Association, the National Agricultural Export Development Board, and EATTA organized this year's conference in Kigali. The group last convened in Rwanda in 2013. Business Insight After returning to Mombasa from the convention, EATTA's George Omuga spoke in depth with TBiz on achieving a balanced definition of sustainability based on renewable energy, low-carbon production, and organic inputs. The interview posts Friday, October 25th. U.S.-based Tea Importers, Inc. has sold its majority interest in Sarwathi Tea Estate in Rwanda to an affiliate of Luxmi Tea Company of India. Principal Andrew Wertheim, who announced the sale, writes that Swarwati supports more than 6,000 smallholder farmers and employs nearly 2,500 workers in the factory fields and forests. He said this strategic move will positively impact the community, adding that the sales will bring synergies for Luxby customers buying Swarwati tea produced at Jisovu, Funda, and Rugabo. Rudra Chatterjee, Managing Director of Luxme Group, shared this comment. Quote, We hope to build on the works the Wertheim family has done to enhance the worthy quality and improve realizations for smallholder farmers. Quote, In Jisovu, Funda, and Rugabadu, farmer incomes have increased due to better price realization, writes Chatterjee, who also chairs the Silverback Tea Company, a joint venture between the Wood Foundation Africa and Luxby Estates. In 1972, the government of Rwanda invited Andrew's father, Joseph Wertheim, to build a factory in Kanihira, in Rwanda's northern province. A joint venture agreement was signed in 1975 with U.S. investors owning 51% and the government of Rwanda, 49%. The first stage of the factory was completed in the fall of 1978, and the first tea was sold at London auctions in February 1979. Sawasi now produces organic, orthodox, and green teas in addition to CTC teas, and is the largest single-producing tea factory in Rwanda. The estate and factories are internationally recognized leaders in corporate social responsibility, having received numerous awards. Quote, We believe Luxme Tea will carry on our commitment to improving lives through tea while making the needed investments to expand Sarwati's production capacity to the next level as the crop increases. End quote, writes Wertheim. In a letter announcing the sale to customers, Wertheim writes, quote, It has been almost 50 years since we started in Rwanda, and the decision to leave was not easy. Sawati has been a big part of our family. It was our father's passion as well as ours. We hope you will all continue to support Sawati under re- leadership of Luxby Tea Company, end quote. The sale price was not disclosed. Luxby generates more than 1,500 karar, about 20 million annually in sales, approximately half of which comes from domestic sales and half from exports. Coca-Cola will launch TikTok-inspired Sprite Plus Tea next spring. The drink originated as a lemon-lime fusion of Lipton tea steeped in a bottle of soda that generated 19 million views and thousands of favorable comments on TikTok. The simple recipe involves jamming two black tea bags into the mouth of a bottle of Sprite, then close the lid and refrigerate for three hours while the tea cold brews a palatable variation of the well-known blend of half lemonade and half tea. 
The short how-to video that Malaysian beverage innovator Hisham Rao posted in July 2023 went viral, accumulating over 125 million impressions in the past year. Brand owners Coca-Cola took the hint and initiated multiple rounds of consumer research, confirming the combination of citrus offers, quote, a satisfying, sprite-forward experience with distinct tea flavors, end quote. Coca-Cola introduced Sprite Plus Tea at the 2024 National Association of Convenience Stores show and announced a zero-calorie as well as sweetened version. Delish.com associate editor Gabby Romero writes that plenty of other people, many of whom have already DYI'd this combination, had a positive reaction to the news. Quote, we're in the golden age of soda-based concoctions with chains like Swig gaining notoriety on reality TV shows and the dirty, fluffy recipes going viral online. It's clear that sweet soft drinks are infinitely customizable, she wrote. Next, Arvinda and Intheramat in Bengaluru reports on this week's India Tea News. India T News for the week ending 18th October 2024. We have some disturbing news from Darjeeling. On October 9th, the assistant manager's bungalow at the Sintom T estate was burned down. A few days later, on October 13th, the same fate fell on the manager's bungalow. Workers alerted the police and the fire department to the bungalows were destroyed. And the police say arson has not been ruled out. St. Tom Tea Estate has been closed since September 25th, following the bonus discussions. Unions in Darjeeling have demanded 20% and as protests intensified, the manager and assistant manager of the St. Tom Tea Estate chose to leave without notice. This was slightly done out of fear of the protests ex- escalating. Meanwhile, the dispatch of tea from the gardens has been stopped and sold tea is piling up in the hill town. St. Tom employs around 680 workers, according to reports. Uh, they've said they've not received any bonus payments. Both sides, the management and workers, are now stuck in limbo. Losses extend to both. In other news, at the 250th board meeting of the Tea Board of India held in Palampur, discussions on how to promote Kangra tea, plans in, to improve the vis- tea's visibility, were discussed, and the Tea Board plans to leverage resources from the recently announced tea development in promotion scheme for campaigns and sustained brand promotion. And this includes airports and railway stations. Incidentally, the East India Company's tea promotion campaign included the extensive railway network they had built to introduce and promote tea to the Indian market. And lastly, uh, Indian industrialist and chairman emeritus of Tata Sons in the Tata Group, Ratnavil Tata, passed away on 9th October. He was 86 under his leadership, the Tata Group became a formidable and profitable business conglomerate with a strong global footprint. The tea industry in particular found an ally in Mr. Tata under his leadership. Tata Tea went from being a tea plantation business to a consumer tea brand, making packaged and branded tea accessible to consumers. In 2005, he decided to exit the plantation business in Munnar, but rather than sell the company, he offered it to employees who continue to be shareholders of the current Devon Hills Plantation Limited. In the East, Tata Tea was divested from the plantation business in 2007. It was also during Mr. Tata's leadership that Tata Tea acquired Tetley, a brand valued at nearly four times Tata's net worth. It was described as the audacious acquisition of a global shark by an Indian minnow. His business achievements run long, but beyond that, Mr. Tata will be remembered for his humility, love for dogs, and the legacy of philanthropy that impacted everything from cancer research to sanitation. As a person who made a difference. And now, a word from this week's sponsor. Hello, I'm Bogdan, a passionate tea drinker and the inventor of the ultimate tea machine, the Brewmaker One. Preparation is key to making fine tea. Sequential steepings deliver the best taste possible and unlock the true value of whole leaf teas and botanicals. Brew automates that process without using any pots or capsules. 
the simple to operate smartphone control device stores steeping profiles to consistently make great tea at the push of a button. Brew also reduces time, waste and energy. That's because I engineered the brew to remember control settings for temperature, brewing time and quantity. Using my patented process lets you stack steep simply and conveniently. This week we catch up with tea importer Elizabeth van der Worst in Brazil. Elizabeth started her tea business in 1994. Her company Amigos do Chá embodies her love of tea and its power to bring people together. Among other things, she feels a deep love for India and in particular Darjeeling. In 2022, Elizabeth and her husband Gerard made a maiden trip to India, one that was years in planning. And she's returned every year and is now planning to bring the tour group to India from South America and Europe, scheduled for 2025. Listen to Elizabeth speak about her love for India and why she can't wait to show tea lovers the beauty of this country. Elizabeth, let me start by saying thank you for being part of the TBS podcast. We are so happy. This is a long overdue conversation. It's so my pleasure. Talking about TT and India. We've talked about it in our own conversations, but I thought I should hear from you again and others should as well. How did this love for India develop? Uh, my journey with tea uh, really began when I moved to the Netherlands. In the 90s, um, there my husband with the she introduced me to the world of tea, and my very first experience was with none other than Darjeeling tea, and it was a staple to on the shelf and available in every tea shop we visit. The name Darjeeling was. Called completely unfamiliar to me in that time. Once in Brazil, I never tasted it in my own life because in my generation, the tea, and I mean a, a lot of women here, they knew only about the uh, herbal infusion. We thought it was tea, but it was herbal infusion made by our grandmothers, mothers like mint, chamomile, fennel, and other region herbs. My curiosity and drove me to understand why Dutch people were so fond of tea. Uh, at that time, offering tea was like a first gesture of hospitality. I never heard about it. was completely ignorant about tea. Yeah? This warning gesture left a lasting impression on me and our jailing being my first experience, became my favorite. It inspired me to create my own tea import business when I returned to Brazil. Well, India became a part of my thoughts not only because it is the producer of Darjeeling, but also because I had the chance to meet my first tea supplier in the Netherlands, Jaap de Groot, who had a deep connection with India. He traveled around the tea several times, frequently, and sharing his stories, painting, and extraordinary imagining of India in my mind. But that time, it was unreachable to me, you know? So because I needed to establish my business, my first time in business, before I couldn't fulfill my dream of uh, visiting India. Many challenges on this journey meant that I had to focus on building my mission to promote tea culture in Brazil. It still took you about 25 years before you, you made your India uh, visit, uh, you know? Yeah, the trip to India. Yeah, this is my favorite topic. 
<laughs> this day, you know, <laughs> because I think everybody here, I talk about India like he's my neighbor, you know. I only oh, have to go to India and speak about, I think people are full of me to speak about India, you know. But it's my top, your favorite top. I have been to India three times, not twice. I've been in India 2022, was my first time, 2023, and this year. Darjeeling was in my, my mind always, uh, was my next stop. I arrived in Bagdogra on, Bagdogra on September 30, and during the Durga Puja festivity, 1st of October 2022, uh, time it was in a vibrant time yeah, in these festivities. Uh, as uh, we traveled from Siliguri to Darjeeling, and um, I made several stops during the trip. Oh, please stop here because I like to speak with the pluckers. I was like a child looking for a very big candy in my hands, you know was was overjoyed. They were my inspiration, the pluckers. Uh, with every ascent up the Himalayas, my enthusiasm grew, and I felt as if I was floating the clouds, uh, literally, literally. After visiting, uh, Mr. Raju took me to a tea farm, a local tea farm, agriculture, very little company, and after that, at dusk approached, I kept asking, Mr. Raju, where is Darjeeli? He said, we are riding. <laughs> and then he said to me, oh, see those tiny lights over there is Darjeeli. Oh, I could not help uh, but burst into tears intense and look, when I speak and when I remember, I become emotional again. And because uh, uh, Darjeeling has always felt like a home to me when I arrived there, you know, like uh, I feel like an, uh, I was an old resident and returning to the place, you know, it was like that. Uh, seeing Mount Kanchenchunga at sunrise was a spiritual experience. Last year, the three months they turned into five months is another story. But and this year, I returned another one and a half months. And why? Why? Because tea brought me to Darjeeling, to India and Kolkata, where I formed partnership and friendships. But the greatest reason in there is that India offers so much in every aspect, you know, cultural, uh, emotionally, and uh, also technologically and uh, philosophy. Everything is in India. You, you have it to be proud of India. Of course, I'm proud of my country, you know, but India has everything. As tea, that is my love, as friends, as beaches, as a spiritual place. You have everything in your country. And the, the positive energy that emanates from the people, I am rejuvenated each time it, I am in India. When I return, people say, did you do a plastic surgery? I said, no, it's India. <laughs> and this is, uh, is something else. Gerard and I are now ambassadors of the beauty of India, aside that many do not see on YouTube because, you know, people are afraid and they, oh, I don't like this and that. You don't see the, the India like we saw. India is sophisticated. People are so, the smile is coming from the soul. And you feel that. It's like a medicine for you in every way, you know. I, we can't wait to have you here uh, back again soon. But yes, uh, going back to the tours now, you want to bring 
friends to India as well. Can you tell us a little bit about the tours you're planning? Oh, yeah. But, well, traveling within India can be both exciting and challenging. Now, I have faced so many experiences in India in the first time. It's not easy for the first time, but you can manage of that, okay? And all this experience, yeah, and uh, subsequent trips, our journey has been much smoother, mainly thanks to the connection we have made through the tea community. I have a team. I make a team over there. Times even to my stay, like Anthony, like Salil from the um, Bajara journey, Husna, a lot of people involved in the, in the tea industry helped me there. And uh, I decided, why I decided to offer the tours, it seems from my passion for tea and my desire to share this word with others. After traveling to the Himalayan regions, to Assam, Meghalaya, and even Nepal, I have gained so much knowledge and beauty, such valuable relationships. I realized that I couldn't keep this experience just uh, first for myself, you know? So um, many people I know in Brazil and Europe have expressed a desire to go to India, but they are afraid, mainly due to the perceived challenges of traveling there. My dream of taking people to India started uh, on a way to introduce them to my supplier and the ticket of Europe, but after I knew India, I always, um, that the bigger challenge, and honestly, the more exciting one to take people over there. With the help of my wonderful partners now, like Glenn Blurney, a true who's now the family Prakash, and a family Pradhan, that Vajara journey, Salil, his father, his brother. I decided to turn this dream into reality. My goal is to invite both uh, tea lovers and those who are new to the tea world to come and explore India. Uh, I am certain that those unfamiliar with tea will fall in love with that, you know. <laughs> uh, and those who already love it, it will depend their appreciation just as I have. We offer two well-organized two tours in collaboration with these two respective companies with that work with passion and integrity. If you like, I can uh, describe a little bit about these two tours. India is not expensive at all if you compare with Brazil, but the trip to India is expensive. It's about 14 hours. You have to stop one place and then continue your trip. So this I was thinking about. So um, the tour with uh, Glenn Burney uh, will be in March and November, 2025. And with City Journey also can be March, April and November, 25. And then every year we do this annually with the bowls. And other options we have also. The tour is offering a a lot of things for tea lovers. The tours we offer are designed for anyone with a passion for tea, culture, and adventure. We collaborate with these two well-established partners, like I told you, Glen Burney and Vajara Journeys. A Glen Burney tea tours offer a truly unique and immersive experience for tea enthusiasts. The journey begins in the vibrant city of Kolkata, the city of joy, where we spend the night at the elegant Glen Burnie Painting House that you know there. And here guests can experience the rich culture, history, and flavors 
of this fascinating city, including a visit to the iconic Nilha House, a historical landmark that reflects the legacy of the tea trade. From Kolkata, we go to Assam, where we stay at the Chani Konga Tea Estate and the family Prakash. This part of the tour allows guests to explore the Laxi green tea gardens of Assam, known for producing bold, robust black teas. Here we also uh, witness the vibrant local culture and hospitality that makes each visit unforgettable. We also include in this trip the park, uh, natural park of Casiranga, where you can see the wildlife there in Assam. It's really beautiful. From there, of course, I let in all these two tours. We let Darjeeling for the last time. Why? I like people come back to Brazil with the taste of Darjeeling tea in their mouths. And also because we have to close with the gold key. From there, we go close our trip in Darjeeling, where you stay at the renowned Glenburnie Tea State, perched off the edge of a hill with a breathtaking views of the Himalayas, and you can see the depend of the months, the Kanshen Shunga. All the state guests will have the opportunity to participate of the tea plucking, learn about the intricate process of tea production, enjoying taste of the famous taste of the Darjeeling teas. One last question. If, if somebody wants to get in touch to, uh, about the tours, where do they get in touch with you? I have announced it in my Instagram, but the, the main uh, contact is by my email, Amigos do Chá, but uh, they can contact me by Instagram, Amigos do Chá. I can't think of a better person to show, you know, India's tea, tea regions to more tea lovers and tea enthusiasts from South America, from Europe. And from wherever in the world. India offers so many things that I can uh, speak uh, all day long about each detail. And, uh, well, I, I hope this, my love, can pass through to these tea tours and through my, my words in order people visiting more India. Can be with me or another one, no problem, but visiting India. You get an experience unforgettable. Intrigued by what you heard in today's podcast? Would you like to learn more from our global network of TBiz journalists and tea experts? Remember to visit the TBiz website for more comprehensive coverage. That's www.t-bizbiz.com. Thanks for listening. Farewell till next week. Produced by Adavita Studios. Connect your voice to the world.